algorithms in the retail sector. So today we have with us uh, Mr. Sachin Tiwari, uh, who's currently working at Wipro Technologies as a senior software uh, developer in data science. He's currently, uh, he's previously worked in various roles like data analyst, uh, data science engineer, and a data scientist at companies like uh, Movicon Asia, Coditatin uh, 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 Systems. So looking for an interesting session with implement, how would the implementation of the algorithms actually work in the retail sector? He'll be guiding us through the brief about it. So over to you. And once again, welcome you, Sachin, on the behalf of Aegis School of Data Science for this session. So looking uh, forward for the session. Thank you. Over to you, Sachin. Thank you very much. So, hi everyone. So, I hope you guys are enjoying the ages. I used to be there for a very, uh, like five years back, I believe. And so, uh, hi everyone. So, I just share my screen first. So, uh, my screen is visible to everyone? Yes, it is. So, uh, so I'll uh, try to uh, make this session a bit of a, a knowledge-based session rather than uh, going deep into the algorithms. But uh, it, and uh, there are few points in this, uh, uh, in these uh, slides or uh, uh, in this session where, uh, it won't, it won't be just limited to retail. Uh, yeah, so the main focus will be on the retail sector, but there might be few of the things which can be uh, done in different, uh, in different sectors uh, also. So I'll try to take you through that and uh, for, um, uh, for wherever uh, it will be possible, I'll try to uh, even showcase uh, you few of the things which uh, we uh, we used to uh, use on daily basis based on some using some other tools or some other platforms. I will try to uh, take you guys through uh, those things also. So. So firstly, any of you have any kind of uh, uh, any kinds of questions or uh, like any kind of expectation which you uh, you have from uh, from the session, and we can make it a bit interactive session also. Okay, so I think I will start first. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hi, this is Lendl here. Uh, actually, yeah, before this session, we had received an update about what the session would be about. So you, we were told mm -hmm. that we would uh, receive information about uh, more about predictive sales analysis, and you would mm -hmm. give us insight on how would you solve inventory management, mm -hmm. and and uh, basically in, and also in forecasting. So yes. this session has a lot to do uh, with our Catcon project. So okay, we're really okay. expecting some insights in, uh, like based on the points mentioned, what this uh, session would be about. So looking forward to hearing from you. Yeah, sure, sure. That I'll uh, cover definitely. So uh, as uh, so, all of you have the same kinds of uh, same kind of caption uh, caption project. Eh? Uh, no, as in four of us have this, uh, the rest have okay. different ideas. Uh, they, I'm sure they will also come up with their questions once you begin your presentation. Okay, fine. Yeah. So um, I believe uh, then I am expecting like four people should interact even more than the other people. Hopefully. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so let's start with the session. So in, so in, um, in this uh, retail sector, if you will just uh, take it uh, right now, so it, it is still in very much developing phase right now. So like uh, previously, uh, what used to happen, there used to be a simple chatbots. Now chatbots are getting replaced by smart assistants. So uh, smart assistant is nothing but a chatbot, but 
a bit intelligent uh, uh, a bit intelligent than uh, chatbots and also with just not uh, just uh, the chatbots were limited to just uh, answering few questions which used to have but right now as uh, as in we are in that phase where uh, a lot of people have already implemented their chatbots and already started collecting a very different kinds of data like be it uh, be it a, a voice data or be it just a textual data so based on all of those things now uh, there are uh, there are many other implementations in smart assistants also which have came into picture now uh, uh, like i remember like four five five or six years back uh, the voice based assistants were uh, assistants were not that prominent but right now as you can see in that uh, in the current era not just uh, not just in, focused on in retail but in other uh, tech platforms like you have uh, uh, amazon alexa uh, google homes uh, apple homes and also all of these now are also uh, going towards the voice based uh, assistance also uh, and as well as uh, there are a few of the uh, use cases like uh, how uh, one can uh, or you or if you say it will be a purchase prognosis so it uh, so majorly what it tries to uh, do is uh, it's it tries to uh, you know uh, have one customer retained for such a long time that you are try to understand all of their habits so previously it was uh, being implemented but it was more like uh, a suggestion based approach but right now as uh, as some organizations have used and collected too much quantity of data so now they can even uh, scale this price purchase prognosis up to some other uh, levels so uh, so i'll just start this session so uh, these are the few uh, uh, few algorithms and domains in uh, in retail so i'll not say these are algorithms but they cover a even wider uh, variety uh, so one will be machine learning which it just simply deals with uh, some machine learning algorithms uh, like logistic regression linear regressions and a sector random forest and uh, if you want to uh, use even boosted trees or all so these will come under all this machine learning category and uh, then it uh, then one step further will be like deep learning algorithms where uh, we are using neural nets uh, for a very uh, now like in every place you will go the most uh, once you are scaling up your product and you have already collected a certain amount of data then yes in the production environment we tend to go towards this deep learning uh, algorithms and uh, so as i suggested that smart assistants are even getting more smarter so same way now um, they we are trying to capture uh, try to capture uh, the videos of uh, your experience in the store or uh, whether you visit on a website so if you visit on a website then yes it would be limited to your uh, clicks and uh, so basically it will be more textual based data but now imagine you go to walmart and if you are inside that walmart so they can now have an option of tracking you and uh, tracking you and using those footages to gain even higher more insights uh, uh, for you or your uh, shopping habits or anything so here computer vision comes to picture and uh, so the next would be like image processing so vis uh, computer vision and image processing they both go hand in hand uh, so by hand in hand i mean uh let's say uh, you visited uh, let's say you visited dmart now you, you are being captured across all your shopping journey inside dmart now uh, so uh, we are not interested in understanding how uh, how many times you are walking through the aisle of a certain product like food section or uh, beverage section or anything so but we are interested where do you wait and see some of the products pick up some of the products so all of these things we capture using the uh, videos 
and then convert it to image and then do the further processing and uh, the next is like a very common like nlp which will deal with all of the textual based data and all and so the final one will be speech recognition so this will be uh, basically uh, when you when you, you might have experienced some of the things like you ordered something from amazon let's say and uh, you got a faulty product or uh, the pro the product which you were shown while shopping it was not delivered to you now when when you have when you call their assistant their helpline number firstly what they try to do is uh, they will ask you few questions like uh, why what is this call regarding and have you received the uh, wrong product or uh, is the product defective so based on your selections on your uh, uh, like on your uh, phone while you are on the call uh, they used to uh, transfer your call to an agent or they will try to uh, you know uh, like they will try to put on you uh, put you on waiting list and so they they have both advantages like you can directly talk to the person otherwise you can also have uh, someone Uh, who can assist you better in priority so at amazon's end they understand all of these things but right now as i said like in the very for in the very beginning like uh, chatbots are developing into smart agents so even all these systems where you are uh, so previously you were required to press one for if you have a default product press two if you have uh, something missing in your product and etc etc but right now Uh, we are in that phase where once you speak onto your microphone we can convert all of those things and have a script ready at our end uh, or at the back end uh, that can help uh, that can help the uh, amazon person to better understand you and also uh, provide you with a better uh, uh, better solution for your problem so now even this is changing uh, to some extent where you don't require to put your input on your phone you just directly speak into your microphone and they will from the back end somebody will uh, attend you based on your priority or based on what kind of issue you have so i'll start with the smart assistants first so uh, uh, so all of these things i have uh, so uh, as you mentioned uh, earlier like you want to understand the algorithms also so uh, so all of these algorithms which are being used in here they go to a very vast variety but out of all of those uh, uh, those algorithms i have a few selected at my end which i'll try to explain you and even you can uh, note those down and do your further uh, research and uh, also uh, i'll try to uh, give you a few of the overview or uh, how acoustic boom modeling works pronunciation modeling works or language modeling works i'll try to make you understand that but because uh, in the short time period it is not possible to cover all of these algorithms but uh, i'll try to mention all and try to explain you few so let's start first. so yeah so uh, in retail sector the uh, for the uh, very first uh, approach the ma uh, smart assistants assistant are like a must in every uh, situation right now like whether be it a uh, uh, let's say uh, a retail based uh, retail based outlet where you physically go or uh, it can be something like amazon flipkart and etc also so they both uh, so all of these uh, organizations have now made it compulsory in like 90% 95% of retail renowned outlets where you visit uh, by retail outlets i mean online as well as physical outlets so uh, uh, some kind of smart assistant you will always find uh, in there so uh, so chatbots have provided us with the automated responses for a very long time now but as now chatbots have been established 
now they can provide professional advice and continue to learn as you uh, as you have a conversation with them so uh, it learns from the information and it tries to advance uh, and it advances so uh, uh, their AI, cap uh, ai capability to self learn is also considered very useful because uh, now uh instead of just giving you answers for few of the things like uh, uh you want to purchase something so you uh, ask a certain kind of question to them so uh, all of these things are uh, are established already so now smart assistant is more of like when you call them uh, they a bot answers you but it also tries to understand based on your voice voice modulation how satisfied are you with your with the conversation so it it uh, so all these information and your acoustic information it is also uh, adding up to their uh, insights about you as a shopper or as a, as their service user so by that i mean uh, like if you have purchased a good phone uh, out of amazon and if it is uh, defective so 5 years back or 4 years back you simply had just one option you can just go through your uh, 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 on your uh, website or on the shopping page and you have a assistant where the he will uh, the assistant will throw you some questions like uh, what it is about uh, is it about your latest purchase so it will list down your top 3 la latest purchase then you will select any one of th those purchases and then it will ask you further questions and then they'll try to handle it by itself or it will uh, redirect you to their uh, to their representative so that you can have a call with them so but now as the system is already established now you can just simply call that uh, agent up uh, call that uh, a smart assistant up and uh, now once you uh, once you are on the call with that assistant that is an automated uh, smart assistant now once you are in call with them with that assistant now we uh, we have that information based on your voice like if you are furious like my phone is not working fine uh, i don't like the service you provided me so now that would add a another layer of insight about you uh, like uh, based on the something comment you write or uh, based on the conversation you had with the chat bot it was just a simple uh, sentiment analysis uh, used to happen few years back but now uh, uh, we are, uh, they are not also dependent on the conversation you had they are just uh, interested in uh, while you are talking to that assistant now based on your voice modulation uh, we have a sure sure uh, sentiment out of your voice which is more uh, true and uh, less uh, tend uh, it, it tends to like uh, give the user and as well as the uh, organization a better understanding of uh, you so these are some few benefits of assistant like less human effort uh, it is more productive uh, it uh, fle it flexible uh, it is flexible uh, the kinds of questions you can ask uh, and it is more accurate faster uh, approaches are there optimize optimize workflow is there and mobile uh, and it is very mobile like you can uh, they can place their assistant on their website uh, as well as in uh, a few of the retail stores like there are few retail stores where you can find a, a just a simple uh, bot or robot type of person where they have incorporated those softwares into its system and you can just simply stand there and ask a few questions like where Uh, where can i find uh, let's say dairy products so instead of a physical person standing there they these bots can uh, these assistant or bots can guide you like you can take uh, you can uh, go to the third aisle to the last end it will you will find dairy products there so all of these things are getting more advanced right now
so just just for uh, like uh, i want you guys also to interact so i'll go to the algorithm part right now but like can uh, you guys tell me like what do you think like few of the algorithms which you think will be useful here like based on your understanding it can be anything then i'll definitely i'll go further and explain you few of the other uh, algorithms but based on your uh, understanding what algorithms do you guys feel will be useful here hello sentiment analysis you here but uh, like i said uh, uh, like i said like uh, in this is smart assistance we have uh, like the sentiment analysis part was already done when you were uh, doing a simple chatbot thing like where uh you uh, what can i help you with let's say using this image like uh, you bought some product on amazon let's say you guys bought an iphone 13 the latest iphone 13 now uh, you, that your box was tempered now sentiment analysis will be definitely be helpful but it was helpful when you were just talking with a simple bot now now try to imagine like instead of uh, using a simple chat bot you are actually calling one helpline number and another automated bot is answering your questions so in those case what things like do you guys feel will be useful here sentiment analysis will definitely be one part so based on the sentiment a classification algorithm might also be used like whether the customer is uh, Happy with the product or unhappy with the product? He is uh, calling the customer care or the smart assistant to give feedback about the product. So accordingly, there might be some classification with all of them also. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, correct. Uh, so, hello, sir. yeah, yeah. So, what about LSTM? Yeah, LSTM can be used, but it will be mostly on the textual side. Correct. So, sentiment analysis. uh the major use of so all things i am carrying under um this textual analysis only okay so lstm yes it can be useful because it's a normal neural net uh, with a short term memory so yeah it can be used and uh, it is basically uh, it works uh, on um, like rnn it works i believe yes Uh, and it can uh, like it will have not only single data point it will have multiple of the data points yeah so all of these are correct so i'll go ahead and i'll try to uh, so all of these algorithms which you guys mentioned yes they are currently they are used very widely but as we are talking about smart assistant which is a advanced version of chatbot i'll try to take you through a even a one step up uh, on these algorithms okay so before you proceed i just want to yeah. ask you something yeah as so as uh, like you're talking about chat bot so uh, like uh, for a past few days i was uh, like, searching about chat bot also so like as chat bot has emerged in like a different kind of way as you were speaking i just want to ask that like if a chat bot is much more for a textual rather than a voice conversation would be better because like sometimes when you speak there are many things that chat bot is not able to a chat bot voice assistant is not able to capture but when you text it will uh, going to store it and then uh, it's going to analyze its sentiment and can going to give you the an answer according to that what's your opinion about that uh, yeah you are right to some extent but uh, yes now imagine the same situation which you have mentioned uh now let's imagine i got a uh, uh, let's say i i ordered one iphone 13 and i got it in a tempered box my box was tempered it was already open so now uh, if i am talking to a chatbot uh, 
uh, how will i sound like what i can i write basically i can write uh, i didn't expect this from amazon uh, as it was a very prioritized uh, purchase you should have taken care of all of these things that it should not happen so here uh, when when we write or when we read this script it will uh, you can try that at your end like uh, it will always give you yes it will give you a negative sentiment value but it will give you the sentiment salience like the value of sentiment uh, negative sentiments about uh, if you are calculating out of 100 it will give you around 70 75 the value yes. of the negative sentiment because i am just reading it correct you agree with that yes sir yes yeah now imagine now if i am talking to the person the assistant i will like literally on that phone uh, if somebody spend a lakh rupees or 1 1.5 lakh of rupees and we get a tempered phone we won't be talking in like 75% of value in negative sentiment right we will be extremely furious on that person like why did you provide me this so so textual yes it can back it can back the negative sentiment but once you hear someone speak the it it conveys the uh, it conveys more uh, weightage to that negative sentiment okay sir yeah thank you so uh, like like i said like uh, how voice is more uh, useful so my i have taken the next example in terms of voice itself so so this is how uh, it is a very basic uh, understanding for you guys like how uh, it works so in the very first step you say whatever you want to say so at this point at the very uh, at this mic point i just i am just let's imagine i got a wrong tempered box and i am just uh, furious at the uh, uh, at the uh, customer service person so uh, or from my voice or whatever i am talking we will be extracting few of the features so this will be common in whether be it a voice or be it a text it will always be similar but where a different angle comes in how uh, chatbots are getting more smarter so this is where uh, it plays a role like acoustic modeling so acoustic modeling is it tries to uh, represent uh which uh, uh phonemes phonemes uh, by phonemes i mean uh, the the similar kind of words uh, so what kind of words were pronounced and uh, what are the word these phonemes complete like uh, for example by phonemes i mean uh, bad and bad and bat can be a similar sounding word but uh, when i say bad it will carry a negative sentiment but when i say bat it it uh, it expects me to complete the sentence like uh, for example uh, taking these two words as an example bad so you ordered something and you had a very bad experience so now once you are talking to a, a virtual assistant or a smart assistant so you will uh, say my shopping experience was bad so now after bad it doesn't require you to complete your sentence it understands now that we are talking about something negative because it you mentioned the word bad and let's say now you can now uh, there's other person who ordered cricket kit cricket or uh, cricket equipments or something now he says uh, i was not expect uh, expecting this bat now the model or the uh, your uh, uh, assistant it understands like bat is not a complete context now you got to explain it to uh, the uh, automated uh, assistant that no i was talking about that uh, this bat was not very good in quality so now now it considered is that uh, it has complete but previously uh, when, as soon as you say word bad now it understands that it is a negative uh, acoustic so uh, 
and uh, the the next very important part in this uh, voice related assistant comes like pronunciation modeling so uh, uh, so now you have a now you have these question in your mind also like amazon being a multi uh, like it uh, you can access amazon from in uk india us all across the world right now you might have that question like how uh, how it is understanding uh, people's uh, the people who are uh, uh, calling for uh, help how it understands their uh, accents or uh, let's say uh, you, if someone from india will say dance uh, dance equipment but someone from uk will say dance equipment so now it need also needs to be that accurate where it understands what kind of uh, what kind of pronunciation you have uh, and based on the other peculiarities in your voice so it it tries to capture that part also so that its decision and uh, the way it assist you can be uh, very accurate and so in the same part uh, the other one comes in like language modeling so uh, uh, so it try so language modeling is similar in text uh, and and a bit uh, like uh, it is similar for both the cases be it voice or text but the minor difference comes in like it uh, while you are uh, speaking something when you are capturing the voice it tries to uh, find the contextual probability uh depending on what type of words you have used you uh, during that conversation by this for example i mean um uh, uh, if i say my purchase my latest purchase which was iphone 13 if the box was tempered so now it tries to uh, it tries to connect all of these uh, important words together like for example iphone 13 box and tempered so it tries to uh, lay a context among all these three words based on their probability so uh, it, it so it helps us to understand and help uh, it helps the smart assistant to help us better and have a good customer experience with us so sir here we would be using tfidf basically tfidf will again uh, go towards uh, yes so if you are converting this uh, speech into text then yes. yes definitely you will use uh, t uh, tfidf but also tfidf will for the future like if you are someone who are who is ordering from amazon for the very first time okay so then tfidf won't be useful because as we said tfidf so what is the full form of it it is term frequency inverse document frequency correct so document is something when you have a uh, a document worth of uh, text then tfidf will be useful because then it can give you the importance so uh, you are yeah got it so yeah got it so so if there are pool of people like let's say uh, there are pool of 100 people who have uh, bought iphone 13 then yes they can convert your uh, they can convert all their 100 Uh, a hundred uh, callers uh, voice to text and then they can apply tfidf and then they can understand what terms are being frequently used and what are the most important terms in with respect to iphone 13 but if you are a individual who is calling uh, for assistance then tfidf won't be useful yeah sir got it So now, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, sir. I have a doubt. Uh, while modeling voice data, uh, what kind of data, like uh, uh, which all different types of voices that we need for data collection, like voice collection? It should be of different voices, different pronunciation, or for a specific domain, for a particular keyword, for their chatbots, or any kind of a smart engine we are building for a particular domain. What kind of uh, or what uh, categories of voices that we need to collect? Different voices should be need. for modeling yes yes so uh, it happens like uh, so all of these models they are 
uh, to some extent right now are still under uh, that uh, under that supervised category to some extent but uh, as we are uh, going forward uh, we have tools like uh, in google cloud platform there is something some api called uh, speech to text uh, if you guys want you can note it down you can read it read about it uh, like whenever you guys get time so there what happens is they have already captured too many voice notes and too many uh, types of voices that now they just simply provide you with apis and you can just pass your uh, voice note through that uh, apis and it will give you n number of results like what are the most important words what are positive words used in that voice voice note what is negative words uh, used in that voice note etc etc including the sentiments and everything so sir so, so it's like more like transfer learning you can say a kind of yes you can okay. say but uh, yeah it also have a very different minute differences but okay. based on the use cases yes you can say that okay sir thank you thank you so now uh, as i said like any other question firstly i'll just try to twist it to bit interesting things also so that you can imagine whatever modeling i am telling you Uh, hello, questions? hi, Sachin. Uh, Nida, you know, yeah. uh, just wanted to check. Your voice is coming a bit low. Is it only for me, or is it for others as well? Too much for everyone. Like everyone uh, yeah. that's audible. Yeah, except... I think. Uh, so you can uh, please check your mic. It was pretty clear at the start. Just uh, now, it is coming a bit low. Is it fine now? Oh uh, no, it's the same. Others do let us uh, know if his voice is properly audible or not. Is it audible now? Uh, participants, ah, uh, is the voice clearly audible? Is it audible? No, ma'am, little bit low still. A bit on the lower side still. Is it fine now? Is it fine now? Hello. Hello. Uh, no, sir. Still, it's coming low. A bit. It's pretty low. But we can go ahead if it is not getting settled. That's fine. I mean, you are you are audible. It's just uh on the lower side. Um, is it somewhere in the Zoom setting where I can set my voice? Uh, I I think you can continue. We yeah. Is it uh, mm-hmm. better now? Okay. Like I am same. carrying my microphone. <laughs> okay. Side okay. <laughs> no, it was uh, audible very clearly. It just said suddenly it dropped a bit. That's fine. You can continue. Like you guys, uh, let me know if uh, it is like definitely unavailable, um, like inaudible. so i'll check otherwise we can like continue with this already yeah hello is it better now i try to change the uh, earphones as well oh uh, yes it is a little better now yeah okay so um uh, uh like uh, i'll just try to uh, like all of these algorithms like acoustic modeling pronunciation modeling language modeling i'll would like you guys to just make a note out of it we you can read it further 
but uh, just to make you understand uh, where it is actually being used uh, because it is used in uh, um, smart assistants also but the but the main uh use why all of these acoustic modeling pronunciation modeling language modeling was developed so language modeling was uh, there for a very long time now but acoustic and pronunciation modeling it is something relatively new based on this uh, as compared to language modeling so uh, it's most important and most prominent example you can think of is let's say alex uh, alexa so uh, alexa is nothing but it tries to capture all of these uh, models like uh, the some uh, consider this mic as an alexa uh, device uh, from you give some voice command to this alexa device let's say uh, change uh, switch off the lights so now uh, once you say that switch off the light it tries to just extract the those features out like uh, light and off so, and then it goes to that uh, acoustic modeling where uh, somebody can uh, give that command in hindi uh, if it is in case of uh, amazon alexa so you uh, you have you might have seen right now like it has been developed in hindi as well so uh, it is nothing but acoustic models where it tries to capture hindi english and any other language and also uh, you might have seen uh, while if you guys have if you guys are setting it up for the very first time it asks you it asks you to say a few uh, phrases like uh, alexa or something so based on your voice it tries to uh, it it so as there is a lot of data which is being captured uh into uh, amazon alexa it tries to uh categorize your acoustic note your voice note to a certain kind of model so that it is it gives you a very accurate uh, output each time you call for it and uh, same happens with the pronunciation modeling also and language modeling is nothing just it converts all your uh speech to text and based on that text it does some uh, it do some action uh and uh, your uh, whatever you asked for is done by alex this is uh, clear like it is better like you got an understanding of what uh, where it is used widely Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes. Got. Ah, yes, sir. Yes. So now, uh, the uh, most uh, like it is not being applied uh, yet to that extent, but. Uh, yeah uh, once uh, there are few organizations in that uh, amazon is the uh, uh, first uh, one who tries to who is developing this feature and also for testing they have started doing some of the testing but not in uh, india right right now but uh, yes it is trying to develop all of these uh, purchase uh, things so purchase prognosis is nothing just uh, it tries to uh, it is trying to develop an uh, amazon is trying to develop an algorithm where it can uh, you know anticipate uh, precisely what you require and deliver your uh, goods to your address before you even place an order but yes in india it's not that prominent right now uh, but uh, as uh, Uh, in other uh, countries like in uh, in the us or uh, uk or something so their uh, stores are not prominent uh, prominently available uh, around in the close vicinity people travel like uh, a very long distances to get their uh, groceries or anything and once and uh, then they uh, like they uh, generally shop in bulk so based on so to uh, to break that barrier of uh, uh, like of uh, you know 
going to that far place for groceries and all and then uh, going back again and again so to break that cycle it tries uh, so amazon is trying to uh, capture all of your uh, information uh, while you are in the store as well as what what products uh, you bought while they are billing you they try to capture all of these information and then try to develop and they are trying to develop an algorithm where um, uh, it can deliver you your goods before even before you place an order so uh, like uh, it uh, so this algorithm is uh, will be based on or it is based on uh, based on all the purchases you have uh, made across uh, throughout your uh, course of the visit to that particular outlet or to that uh, particular website in case of uh, i'm uh, i'm just giving you the uh, example of amazon but it is generally being developed by uh, uh, let's say walmart also as well as costco also in every other place where people need to travel and this came and uh, all of these things came into a picture and uh, got a very uh, you know a hype around this algorithm once this uh, covid-19 pandemic happened uh, and also uh, it it helped them to uh, increase their profit margins like if you can predict what people might be ordering or what they require a long time uh, like before they even come to your store so it will also result in efficient inventory management uh, and if let's say in case of amazon uh, if you are ordering something on daily basis let's say uh, coffee uh, for many people they have a habit of ordering coffee every uh, every month start of every month now imagine if my card details are already feed into my profile now uh, amazon detects that this month is going to get over let's send the coffee to that person whoever like if i am ordering some coffee what brand i like or what type of coffee i uh, have or what i have ordered in my past so they just automatically send that uh, up to my address so that will also help them to retain me as a customer for a long period of time uh, and customer acquisition cost after all of your purchases it keeps on going down and uh, also it helps to uh, you know maximize your uh, uh, customer experience so again we will do that uh, exercise like what kind of uh, 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 algorithms do you guys feel like it will be useful for predicting uh, the purchase so most of the algorithms will be correct in that case is in that uh, cases uh, and if you can use any of the of the uh, things we come it will just depend on the type of data you are working with so uh, is for uh, predicting this customer purchases these are the few uh, widely used uh, algorithms but yes uh, it can be modified into some different uh, kinds of uh, uh, kinds of variation but the basic the basic uh, algorithms the underlying algorithms will be around these algorithms only like there might be some case where uh instead of a uh, recurrent neural network you can use cnn or rnn based on your uh, requirement or the based on your uh, uh like the type of data you have captured uh, the, they can use any kinds of algorithm but yes mostly will lie or mostly will be used around these algorithms only so i'll just try to give you an uh, like example of like how uh, 
like out of all of these things i'll try to give how like markov chain is used sir sorry to interrupt before you move forward i had a doubt yes, like if we compare the pre covid and the post covid era mm-hmm. what were the changes with the perspective of algorithm or with the usage of algorithm in the retail sector what you can think of or you can suggest some so uh, uh, so there is not per se in algorithm only there uh, are uh, not many changes but yes the focus of business have changed like previously what used to happen like they are more uh, interested in something like uh, uh, something like uh, this where people they, they were having a, a lot of uh, visits a lot of uh, footfall was there in their retail stores so now, then they were uh, fo- more focused towards building all of these kinds of assistants so that they can uh, they can decrease their you know, human efforts or increase the productivity of their workers uh, or uh, have a faster approach towards solving a customer's issue so all of these were the main focus pre covid but as soon as your foot uh, footfall fall uh, the your foot uh, footfall decreases which was post for covid which happened then the algorithm remains same just the focus of work shifted towards some different kinds of uh, algorithms or problem spaces so uh, you can say pre covid uh there were uh, the all the retail stores they were more focused towards uh you know better customer uh, experience or in store analytics like how they can increase drive their sales in store uh, so all of these things were uh, their main focus but uh, uh, post covid when people were not allowed to uh, exit their homes or allowed to exit their uh, like a secure uh, uh, such secure boundary there now the these businesses were uh, they had no use of uh, you know uh, doing in store analytics so instead their focus shifted towards a different problem statement algorithms remain same the uh, so let's say uh, if i uh, for example let's consider uh, that as just an example now uh, uh, let's say uh, you are uh, working for some certain kind of area let's say uh, uh, retail you are working some with amazon let's imagine for a second uh, now uh, you have to uh, identify if the person is going to make this purchase or no uh based on the products which are added to their cart you just want to simply predict it so what you will do you will simply apply logistic and uh, regression and try to identify whether you will buy it or whether you will not zero or one simple uh, question uh, simple uh, thing will be uh, simple task will be uh, for uh, you to achieve that task will be just a simple logistic regression but now consider uh, you from amazon you moved to a healthcare sector now you want to identify if this person should be tested for any further diseases or no now what happens your algorithm remains same just your problem statement is changed there also you will be applying a uh, logistic regression in both the cases be it healthcare or be it amazon but your problem statement changed You yes sir I got hope, it i hope you understood yes sir. yes sir thank you so much so uh, like all of uh, the other uh, algorithms i think you might have already have an idea about it but like uh, i'll just try to explain you the markov chain so uh, so markov chain is a very simple uh, algorithm which you can go for when you want to uh you know understand the customer purchases or try to uh predict where, what is the possible time to uh the possible time to send their uh, uh, package to their addresses so markov chain is just a simple description of sequences of the events 
uh, in which the probability of each of the events will only depend uh, it will only depend on what uh, uh, what kind of response that algorithm got in their previous uh, events like uh, for an example in simpler words if i uh, if i'll uh, try to explain you is like the future like the future will depend on the past like if you have let's say total of uh, 10 uh, 10 purchases of coffee at the starting of the month so now the, uh, based on these previous 10 uh, 10 visits from amazon on their website and ordering coffee so now the 11th the 11th uh, visit you can um, make out that the 11th visit will be on the starting of the month uh, of the 11th month and uh, the pro- most probable the most probable item will be coffee so markov chain helps to uh, helps the business to understand uh, the uh, future depending on the actions taken in the past for it like uh, i didn't go too much into depth but uh, the basic working of the uh, algorithm is uh, this one yes sir got a uh, got a basic knowledge about it already so the uh, next challenge which which is the most like generally wherever you will go or wherever you will uh, also you might have seen or even uh, this like method of pricing this is the most important uh, thing which uh, any retailer do this on these day, uh, on this day till date this is the most focused area whether it will be pre covid or post covid this will always be uh, will be used the pricing method and the changes uh, in the algorithm or uh, how much optimized you can make your uh, pricing methods so this will always be uh, there so uh, it is nothing just like uh, i'll try to explain this with a practical example more than just uh, like telling you some of the theories like for example if you are about to make any purchase let's say uh, you guys uh, order a you uh, any one of you is looking for a laptop for example now if you are looking for a laptop i am definitely sure none of you will blindly go to amazon type the model name and buy it from there it is a very less probable chance that you will any one of you will do that instead uh, i believe uh, one will go to uh, uh, flipkart first then check even we will be going to that level where we are going to check the local stores like chroma vijay sales uh, also their websites what pricing they are giving and then we can go on amazon and then try to among all of these four we will choose whichever is the lowest price uh, wherever it is lowest price irrespective of from where we are ordering until they are reliable of course but uh, like this will like this will be done by everyone whether you are buying a simple uh, phone laptop or any other uh, product so uh, pri- method uh, method for pricing uh, it is like the most effective uh, application of artificial intelligence or machine learning in the in, uh, retail uh, industry so uh, and, and it is a one of the most difficult challenges for the retailers is the product pricing only so they should know uh, at every given point at every given uh, time they should know the market price for the product before they price it to uh, before they decide on any particular price 
so uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning applications uh, for uh, for uh, retail they can help the retailer to de determine the ideal price for the product uh, and uh, they have to come up with that price which can entice maximum number of customers or to their uh, website or to their store so uh, and this model is directly related to their revenue and profitability because uh, because uh, like the artificial model artificial intelligence or machine learning models in retail store will always ensure profitability in terms of pricing without uh, without uh, causing you lose the customer so uh, this uh, is the most mostly widely uh, used or the very first approach which any retailer takes is work on the pricing methods so there are many uh, like uh, i'll try to share you some of the links also you can just go through it so they uh, so there are many uh, uh, small scripts also like people have written a very simple python script uh, where you search a product name and that python script uh, crawls through all of the possible uh, website and gives you the uh gives you the uh the uh, the least price of that particular product which you have searched uh and like if you want a very practical example for it uh, i am just talking about in the terms of retail but you can think of any of you have heard of sky scanner hello sky scanner no, sir. while so uh you guys can uh, like if you are taking a flight to some place instead of going to just uh, all of these uh, websites like make my trip ibibo or xyz whatever you try to prefer uh, people generally use sky scanner so sky scanner is nothing it is a ticket booking site only but what it does is it, it will ask you the location uh, like from where you want to board and what is your destination just like uh, any other website but what it does different is it will crawl through all the possible uh, possible uh, ticket booking sites and it will return you the least price flight so it is nothing very simple script in python uh, it is being wrapped into a very good ui and it helps the uh, person to uh, you know uh, find the most least price like if you guys need i can show you one sample of it so it is been so it is uh, not very much profitable uh, right way but yeah it is more of a free thing so it works on every all the other thing so now let's say then i want to go so you can even find that uh, script working behind can you see my screen Yes, sir. So now you can see the searching, and you can see all of the other uh, uh, other websites searching clear trip, searching make my trip, and it will go through all of these travel easy go and whatever websites you know for the ticket booking. It will just go through all of these and try to uh, give uh, try to give you the cheapest. of all so even uh, even amazon and every other uh, amazon flipkart beat any other retailer it tries to do that so even if you will uh, try to study let's say uh, dmart uh, the most successful retailer right now so they also tend to uh, research their market so thoroughly that you will uh, always find Uh, prices at dmart will be on always on the lower side than any other retailer for the same product whether be it for a just uh, one rupee or something but still uh, they will try to focus on the pricing first so uh, so uh, for the pricing it tries to firstly you can see uh, it can cover all of these uh, things like it will go through the competition first then it will go through the season 
then it will uh, look for the special event or holidays, operating cost uh, and warehouse information. Uh, and uh, by microeconomic variable, I mean, uh, let's say inflation. Inflation is a microeconomic uh, variable. Like if, uh, uh, if cost of fuel will increase, then there uh, might be few things like uh, rice, which is, uh, which is being cultivated in some remote area. So, uh, uh, so DMAR transporting cost will also increase and that will increase for every one of the retailers. So, uh, so these are the microeconomic variables uh, on the broader uh, level, which impacts the pricing. So it considers all of these uh, things, uh, all of these aspects, and then they try to determine the initial price, discount price, and the promotional price. So uh, this will be like a basic uh, uh, understanding, like what uh, it is, what features uh, are being uh, achieved using what kind of pricing method. So like you can see like prices, where prices will change frequently. So this will happen uh, if you will apply all of these things also. Like even if dynamic prices by name only, you can uh, understand like uh, it is, it means like prices will go up and down. Uh, price optimization, automated uh, price automation with machine learning, you know. Uh, so let's see here, like main goal is to reduce the pricing, uh, pricing process cost. So dy in dynamic pricing, uh, it, it won't be able to, you won't be able to achieve this feature. Same with the pricing optimization, but pricing automation with machine learning, yes, you can uh, reduce the pricing process cost. So same will be uh, across all of these uh, features. Like if you want to do the dem uh, demand forecasting. So by demand forecasting, uh, if you will apply demand for forecasting in dynamic pricing, so it can't be done. But yes, if you want to do price optimization, so while you are applying price optimization algorithms, then yes, you have to consider demand forecasting. So uh, you are, you see like there is not a, there is no particular algorithm we are working on to achieve all these things. But for example, in demand forecasting, so what you are initially doing is you are just doing the time series forecasting based on some parameter, let's say sales or demand, you are doing demand forecasting, but that demand forecasting model, uh, which you have created for the uh, organization, uh, they are they are ending up uh, using that in line with price optimization so that you have a better price as well as uh, you can use your previously created model so it is kind of an ensemble so you understood uh, you are understanding my point like there is no dedicated algorithm for every uh, every task you do but there are ways like you can use your previously uh, optimized or previously used algorithm in line with some other uh, algorithm and you can ensemble simply and create something else altogether. So here, like the most important widely used uh, is like the firstly this generalized linear models, deep learning is being used, reinforcement learning is being used and demand forecasting. So uh, like uh, for let's say, uh, for how reinforcement learning is used. So uh, uh, re in simple language reinforcement learning is it is a very, it is a feedback based uh, machine learning algorithm. So by feedback based machine learning algorithm, I mean uh, your algorithm will firstly try to perform some action and then try to see what is the result of those actions. So uh, uh, for to make it even more simpler, what it will do, it will try to add some reward element and then try to maximize, keep maximizing that reward uh, 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 reward uh, element uh, and uh, try and tries to uh, 
you know give you uh, a better result with each moving step so this uh, sir, so uh, yeah yeah go ahead sir, sir uh, this reinforcement learning mechanism is more like deep learning is propagation right like back propagation like this also giving that feedback weightage then it is uh, updating the weights and again continuing for a yes, better yes. model yes yes for all of these algorithms there will be some kind of um, now uh, let's imagine you are doing demand forecasting model demand forecasting model it is not necessary that you want you need to use certain kind of algorithm only for demand forecasting also you can use deep learning and as soon as you will use deep learning or neural net for your uh, for development of your algorithm that uh, uh, reward element will always come in picture so it will only depend on the uh, type of data which we collect so wherever uh, we can use deep learning so uh, let's say for an example uh, if you are uh, if you are given given some uh, uh, nlp uh, task so in nlp there are many straightforward uh, algorithms which are being used but uh, you can also achieve those uh, nlp uh, in that nlp algorithm you can achieve all those results using deep learning also so once you apply deep learning then the reward uh, thing will come in picture but if you just directly want to use reinforcement learning so out of all this uh, linear regression and all the other uh, basic uh, models or algorithms deep learning will have the uh, reward uh, thing in picture as compared to other uh, algorithms you got the point like you yes sir so that so uh, for the any other questions any other further questions we are a bit over time but please bear with me there is this last one topic and i have i'll uh, try to give the demo of the tools which we uh, actually used previously so it will be a very easy task but uh, it will be very interesting for you guys to see that how what to what extent uh, we are trying to do the personalization in uh, retail sector or be it any other sector wherever personalization can be done Should I move ahead? So the uh, last one, where uh, it is still in the development phase, the other one was personalization. So retailers uh, they try they try to use uh, a, um, artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithm to identify and. Uh, they tries to evaluate their customer purchase habits uh, so that it results in uh, uh, so it helps them ha help the retailers to uh, you know to enable their uh, uh, enable their merchants whosoever are selling their products to uh, give their customer a very tailored experience so uh, for example uh, let's say uh okay so there are girls and boys okay so um let's say uh, most of the guys here will be more interested in uh, you know understanding sneakers and many uh, girls or ladies like uh, here will be more interested towards you know understanding uh, they will be more interested in heels flats or those kinds of uh, footwears so now now imagine if uh, if you enter mintra and on the home page uh, they know that you are a boy or a girl or uh, uh, or a lady or a gentleman so they try to you know if you are a men then they try, if they if you are a male customer if they will show you flats and heels which will be very generic so it won't be it won't be a very good experience for you and same with the uh, females so if we show them adidas and nike sneaker so they won't be that interested they might be but generally they won't be based on your habit i am considering that uh, very there is a very uh, clear uh, clusters of men and uh, women 
so uh, so uh, once you identify that this person is interested in sneakers so it it makes sense to give you a, a home page or a picture of sneakers first rather than giving you uh, adidas heels or flats or uh, a different kinds of formal shoes or something so that won't make sense so here uh, this is where personalization comes to picture and uh, so i'll try to uh, explain you this personalization using a very uh, so uh, firstly i'll try to explain you the benefit uh, so uh, it will send out an uh, out of stock recommendation like if your favorite sneaker let's say i am a very uh, big sneaker head so now let's say if jordan 1 black and red comes in stock and i want to buy them so they should give me the recommendation that they are back in stock or if it goes out of stock it should give me a, a similar uh, recommendation of uh, let's say uh, air jordan 1s are out of stock uh, black and red are out of stock but white and red are available so they can uh, they can redirect my uh, interest towards a different kinds of uh, shoes Uh, so and also it helps to read uh, helps them to retarget their customers before they go so that uh, you have several other uh, types of options uh, and uh, then there is personalized home page and navigation which i just mentioned like if you are a, a mail then it makes sense to show you the mail uh, mail related products first and if you are a female then your navigation and home page should look like that and uh, so uh, you might have also came across this so making the post shoppable so this is nothing but uh, for an example if you are looking for a certain kind of a dress or a shirt dress for uh, women shirts for men like if you are looking for a certain kind of product on uh, on your uh, uh, amazon flipkart or myntra then you might have noticed while you are scrolling instagram you find that similar kind of ad there and it is also mentioned in, uh, below uh, that shop now so that is what is like making post shop shoppable and it allows continuous shopping so uh, so here you can uh, you can uh, like you get the picture like what kinds of algor algorithms can be used it can be something like uh, association rules also it can be used a priori can be used like based on your uh, what you uh, like something which has been brought together bought together recently or something like that so all of these things can be done but i'll try to explain you or i'll try to show you a, a very slight picture like what kinds of uh, things we are doing right now is my screen visible is my screen visible to everyone yes sir yes sir so uh, like i said like very beginning we started with uh, uh, what you call it uh, smart assistant so smart assistant was something which is uh, like which is an upgrade which was an upgrade to uh, you know a chatbot but now Uh, let's say uh, you are visiting uh, a physical store or uh, uh, let's say walmart if you are visiting a physical store there they are capturing you using their cameras as well so now you might have uh, it might bring you uh, like it, you might have some questions like how this video is useful so as i mentioned in the very first slide where uh, it was uh, using your voice it was extracting some feature and features was the words which we are using so in the uh, in personalization case where they are tracking you using your camera features will be like where did you stop at what aisle you stop what product you picked so now for an example uh, this is uh, like a readily used vision api which is being used uh, on regular basis so i am considering that i have captured an image uh, a video of a person uh, of a person who is buying uh, let's say vegetables at a grocery store and i have just 
uh, captured their video and based on that video i have identified uh, a key frame a key frame will will be nothing just an image like what what uh, vegetable he or she is picking so based on that i can do some kind of further analytics so i have some picture in stock with me i have just uh, just to show you an example what kind of information we can get using the video and identifying the key frame it will just take a minute yeah so see i got this picture uh this picture i got okay so this is someone who is shopping on a grocery store now i have identified the key frames that this person uh, she is buying a grocery uh, a, a food related uh, vegetable related groceries right now so now what kind of information i can take out for my uh, for the better understanding of the particular customer i can show you here see so now while shopping we can also track their uh, facial expression expressions like whether it is a joy anger surprise or it is blur or even we can uh, we can also have something like confidence how confident are we about all these sentiments or these emotions while shopping so uh, you can see that the extent of uh, information which a which uh, retailers or in store retailers are trying to you know capture uh, uh, for each customer so now let's say if uh, if any vegetable was rotten so her face expression would have changed and it would have show, uh, it would have shown the value in somewhere here uh, let's say sorrow or anger and all of these per percentages also you will be getting and you can also see the objects so based on the key frame i have identified that this is the person who is looking at fruits and uh, so this is a very uh, basic uh, api like if you guys uh, are interested in trying it uh, so you can sign up to this gcp uh, google cloud platform and they will provide you with some 300 credits for free and you can uh, choose uh, you can play around uh, with this and uh, so this is more of a try uh, try it out api but other than that it gives you many other features also so like if i'll go to labels it it identified so many things just from one picture and without any human intervention so it identified that uh, the food is there green is there plant is there all are natural foods selling whole food whole foods are there it is a public space market green grocery leafy vegetables so you can see how accurate is it so based on the products which are being identified we can see all of these things and even what she is wearing so now let's say uh, we are somewhere now let's say dmart or uh, dmart comes in with their uh, fashion brand also so now if they are doing such things so now they can all uh, identify what the shopper uh, inside their retail store is wearing so based on all those things also they can gain some kind of information like here just from the picture they identified 76% as a street fashion because she is just carrying uh, the person is just carrying one glass and t-shirt along with the bag human settlement so all of these things you can see like even it identified the jewelry so this is all happening without any human intervention even to some extent it identified what kinds of food they are uh, were, which they are standing around so now let's say if uh, any one of you was in place of this person and let's say uh, your emotions were not very good uh, in, on the very first line uh, because you saw something rotten and while you are going for a for in your billing counter i ask you as a cashier that uh, why uh, what was wrong with uh, the cucumber or melon family or something in the melon family so even you will have that uh, like even you will have that kind of satisfaction or personalization 
and you will feel special that yes i was not very comfortable with that rotten fruit and the cashier have asked you directly like how what what was wrong with there so you can just simply ask them or tell them so this can be a very good experience for both the uh, at the retailers end as well as the customer end also so there are many uh, things you can see like even it goes to that extent where it tries to tell you what are the dormant colors in the keyframe so you can see that it has identified all of these colors like green orange and all is there and also it go can goes to some extent where uh, while person is using their hand to pick up something below and uh, above or below it it can also identify what products are kept so based on this if it is being labeled as a green uh, vegetable or a green uh, fruit uh, you can easily look into this image and find out if this was not an issue or if this was not rot rotten or if this is uh, placed in a very good position in their uh, rack in their shelf so all of these information you can just simply uh, identify using these kinds of techniques so it it gives you so many information just using one keyframe so now imagine so, if you are yeah no sorry is there any limitation that you can access this yeah no is there any can, no you can you can just go simply go to google and type gcp or google cloud plat gcp login you can do and you will see this first link google cloud platform so i have already exhausted everything i am been using it for a very long time now so uh, you can see this kind of this kind of page here you can just simply log in and once you will log in you will get 300 credits uh, as a, uh, as a free credit so you can uh, just uh, go through their uh, uh, thing what they offer it is more like aws so like if you want an uh, like a ec2 instance uh, uh, where you want to run some crawler script or run some script and see if it is fetching the data or no so you can use all of these things so and this is like a serverless thing so this is storage databases you can uh, use any kinds of service which you want uh, but there is one limitation that you can't use most of it or you can't use it uh, to that extent where you exhaust all your credits then it will be billable but otherwise till 300 it's free so there are many things which they offer uh, like i'll suggest you like you if you want if you are uh, much interested in uh, the uh, these things like you can see like text to speech is there Uh, recommendation models are there uh, natural language document uh, ai is there data labeling is there so all of these things translations they provide video intelligence they provide so in video intelligence you can upload a small video and based on that video it will give you all kinds of analytics like all kinds of identification or anything and you can just go through their apis and you can check all of these things so there is no limitation as such you can try it out for free okay sir so in that last personalization one i tried not to keep any algorithm but to show you like what kinds of uh, applications of the tools which we are using in the real, uh, on on the production basis in daily uh, life so right now uh, this gcp google cloud platforms they are providing you with so much uh, analytics at your disposal that you can just you just need to simply set up your thing like let's say if any one of you are try planning to open a retail store you can just place your cameras identify and uh, just put your recording through this gcp google cloud platform and it will give you the key frames and uh, based on those frames they can give you the other analytics what kinds of people are visiting you what kind of products you should keep 
So all of this will give you a very clear understanding of the business. I hope it was helpful to some extent. If you guys yes, have sir. any other questions, you can ask me right away, or uh, you guys can connect with me on LinkedIn. I will be happy to answer your questions if you have any. Any questions? Any further questions? Participants, do we have any questions? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. All right. Uh, then shall we end it over here then? So thank you very much once again. Uh, anybody uh, would want to ask any questions, please go ahead with that. I don't think. Uh, that, uh, uh, yeah, yes. Uh, I have one question, sir. You have mentioned about an API uh, about that uh, speech to text that we can try out. Can you please mention one more thing? Yeah. So, uh, all of the APIs, they are present for free at uh, in GCP Cloud Platform. You can try it out for free, but if you want to actually uh, develop something, then uh, you can just simply log into your uh, this Google Cloud platform. You can uh, see some uh, under more products, you can see APIs and services. You just simply to go to this uh, list. And uh, so once it loads, I try to So uh, you can see here, you, uh, you have all the uh, APIs mentioned here API in API library, Google Cloud Platform. And you can see all of these APIs. So if you want to do something related to maps, so they have a different APIs based on the maps. Like let's say if any one of you guys uh, wants to start something related to, uh, let's say, food delivery. So now you would definitely need a uh, location-based data. So you can use all these applications. And in API library, as you as you mentioned, speech to text. So you can see in machine under machine learning, you can find all of these APIs, uh, Vision API. Uh, so this image content analysis. Uh, natural language APIs that can give you entity recognition uh, uh, and uh, the sentiment analysis. This is the speech to text. You can simply go to this API, uh, enable it, and then it will give you a uh, uh, give you a try it, try this API sample, and you can simply try it out using all of these. The guidance will be there provided to you with all the uh, documentation they needed. Okay. Thank you. Each API, uh, each API, you just simply need to go there and you can click on this try and this API and you can uh, try it out. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any more questions, participants? No, ma'am. So um, it was glad having you here, Sachin. Um, on behalf of H School of Data Science, I would like to thank you for a wonderful session on the insights of the retail, uh, uh, everything market, and you know how it works for customers, personalization to you know segmentation, uh, and I'm sure the, it was a great insight for the participants as well. So thank you uh, for coming and uh, sparing your valuable time with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you very much.